how are you? I hope you're well. Today in this video, I'm going to talk about, you're going to love this video, 10 iconic fashion items that you didn't know they were French. Ooh. <laughs> if you're new, hi, I'm Frédéric. Welcome to my channel. Please consider highly to subscribe just by click, 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 and give me a big thumbs up. I will ask you a question a little bit later on. You're gonna love this video, you're gonna learn something, and you're gonna have a lot. I thought about this video for a very long time because this video, the six iconic French fashion women that I created a few weeks ago, was so popular with you, and I thought maybe I'm gonna do a series of French icon things. Please, disclaimer, I'm not said French people are better, okay? I'm just said we are very, very creative. <laughs> let's have a sip, grab your cup of tea or coffee, and let's have a chat. First one, well, you, I'm sure you're not gonna be surprised with my choice, and in the same time I'm talking, I'm gonna put photos somewhere, is La Marinière. La Marinière is a striped tops, okay? And yes, it's really coming from the French. Actually, it's coming from the French Navy in 1858, okay? So it's called as well the Breton shirt, is because it was a lot of, still actually, marines and fishermen in Brittany, where I'm from, by the way. Yes, in French, you will say, je suis breton. And they were very famous for vos marinières to be super, uh, resistant and warm and you could and comfortable as well you know so um, it was a bit avant-garde and then who put this mariniere who used this mariniere to put in on a fashion walk and I'm gonna talk a lot about her in this video Coco Chanel. So Coco Chanel, after the second war, the clothes were still very restrictive and she was looking for something more casual. Then she revamped the marinière. So, and you know, where's the success of it now? And then we keep going until Jean-Paul Gaultier used the marinière all the time. And you will see a lot of French people still wear the marinière, me included. I love it. Maybe it's a stereotype, but this is French. <laughs> the second one. Ooh, la petite robe noire, the little black dress. And it's the little black dress every woman should have at least one or two in the wardrobe closet. And it's starting again, the beginning of the uh, probably 30s, I would say, with Coco Chanel because she was looking for a dress for a long lasting, something versatile, affordable, and accessible to every woman. So Coco Chanel creating the, the black little dress. How interesting. Number three, oh, even me, I was surprised. I'm like, what? The swimwear, yes, the swimwear, especially the one piece. So I'm sorry if I'm looking down a bit because I have to read my notes, okay? I don't know everything by heart. Um, so the first one was created by Jean Patou in 1930s and it was in Jersey Knit and it was one piece, you know those big one piece that people were going to the beginning of the paid holidays actually and uh, yeah so they used to swim and I can imagine to go for a swim in a Jersey Knit. You better to be a good swimmer because I'm pretty sure you sink with that. And then guess what? The bikini, bikini, ni, 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 the bikini, yes, same time, and it was by a French guy called Louis Rea. Have you noticed that the guys are creating the swimwear? Hmm, I wonder why. And, and yeah, so it was a big scandal at the time, showing so much skin, you know. And I'm really glad now we are modern women and we have kind of a spandex in terms of the swimwear, but it's French. If you do not agree with those things, I'm gonna say, Please Google it. I'm pretty 99% sure of the thing I'm saying because I've done some research, but you never know. I'm sure someone's gonna say, I don't agree with you. Anyway, let's go back. Number four, wow, sportwear. Yes, the French people creating the sportwear just at the beginning, 19th century revolution. So they were looking for more comfortable clothes, for swimming, cycling, shorter skirt. They were playing tennis. And guess who's starting as well? Coco Chanel, because they wanted, she wanted, excuse me, something more comfy for women, but as well, Lacoste, you know, the little crocodile, very popular with the French people, 
quite quality, by the way. And they're starting with the French knitwear, and that was a symbol of an independent woman to wear with really casual clothes. Don't you love it? Number five, and I know in English it doesn't mean anything, but in French, this is how we call it, is le smoking. So le smoking is not no smoking cigarette, smoking because some French people use some English word in a very wrong way, which is very funny. But, and maybe one day I will do a video about it because that's very hilarious. But anyway, le smoking is like a tuxedo and the first person who creating a tuxedo for women was Yves Saint Laurent. Oh, what a talent, Yves Saint Laurent. So he's starting his first catwalk with a tuxedo, so le smoking, I'm going to say in the French way, le smoking, in 1966. And it was for men, but he decided to styling more, uh, more for the women's body. And it was, again, a big scandal at the time because it was either way too sexy or too masculine for women. But, you know, Yves Saint Laurent, <laughs> he just did it. And we thank him for that. Number six. Ooh, you're gonna like this one. Wow. The high heels. Yes. So there's a bit of a controversy on this one. It's starting with Louis XIV. Louis XIV, we used to call him Le Roi Soleil. Okay. Amazing king he was. And um, I'm gonna show you again some image in September and I'm talking. And guess what? Those men at the time, they were a bit that we call precious. They were putting a lot of makeup and they were used to powder a lot of their wigs and fasten and fasten of silk and oh, I don't even know what they were wearing, but it was very, very hot. And they were wearing those tiny, tiny heels. Actually, at the time, it was prohibited for women to wear those heels because it was too masculine for women to wear high heels. I did my research and I'm like, what? But we can say their high heels, maybe one of the creation of the high heels, they come from uh, Louis XIV. So, merci Louis. <laughs> oh, I love, love, love this one. Le signature bag, the signature bag. Kelly Birkin Hermes, for example. But actually, in 19th century, um, Napoleon III, his wife called Eugenie, ask a young guy, okay, a young designer, as it can be a young designer in century, write for her a personalized bag and some boxes for the hat and as well some suitcase to travel. And the young guy say yes. Now do you want to know his name? Louis Vuitton. Ooh, he didn't know that, huh? So then Louis Vuitton start creating the first personalized bag with the initials and more structured bags and suitcases that we know now with the logo. And yeah, that's our story. I'm a little bit proud to be French in this video. Sorry, don't shoot me, okay. Number eight, ooh, 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 la lingerie. La lingerie. So I think you say the lingerie, but otherwise you call that underwear, undergarment. And who we have to thank for that? We have to thank our last queen, Marie Antoinette. So Marie Antoinette in the 18th century, she starting, she was very libertine and she was very light and she said, oh, it's too many clothes in this castle. <laughs> And she started wearing those very thin cotton gown, gown, excuse me, that you can see a little bit through. And that was the beginning of the lingerie. Okay, so think now about Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, I think he was in the 90s, was starting to do those bra, like the Cons bra, like Madonna, you know. Wow, what an evolution of lingerie. By the way, I want to ask you a question. Would you be interesting for me, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer, if I make a video about lingerie. It's a bit delicate topic because I don't want to be censored by um, YouTube. They had a very strict rules. But if you want a video about la lingerie, please let me know. Leave a comment. Number nine, the costume jewelry. Wow, what is that? Mm, listen to that. So it happened exactly after the first one. Actually, at the time, because people get so poor, it was so hard, and etc. The war, you know, the world war I'm talking about. 
So wearing expensive gems, expensive diamond, lots of bling bling, but the real one, it was seen as a bad taste and it was almost seen as vulgar. So they start creating those, what my grandmother used to call the fantasy jewelry. So it looks a bit with the gems, but they were not real. And guess who starting with, especially with pearls? Coco Chanel. I didn't wear my pearls for this video. Maybe I should have. And number 10, and I'm sure you know this one, palette flat. But it's not a French person who created it. It's actually a beautiful Italian woman under the name of Rose Repetto. And she has a small shop in Paris in 1947 and her son was a dancer choreographer and she decided to design those shoes for him to be more comfortable for dancing. So it is starting to be a ballet flat and he became so popular. Now it's a symbol of the French shoes, which is funny to know that. So I hope you love a little bit of history doesn't hurt. Don't forget to tell me in comment what you think about this video. Did you learn something new? I hope so. <laughs> and I wish you a beautiful day, weekend, and don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't done it. I'm gonna show you, you will love the future video coming soon. Lots and lots of goodies are coming. Big kisses, you have a good day, you take care. Bye-bye.